Hello guys, the editorial of uh, September 15th. So we have the new post office bill 2023, which has been uh, uh, introduced in the Rajya Sabha and uh, in the new special session, which is going to happen now, it may be taken up for discussion and it will be mostly passed by the uh, Lok Sabha also. Uh, currently our uh, bill, okay, our bill is like colonial 1898 act. And so that will be now uh, turned into a new 2023 act. So that is what is, uh, the detailed discussion we'll do because a uh, post system, okay, post system has started right from the Chandragupta Maurya's time. Uh, Maurya Kingdom, Ashoka time and all the pigeon post system used to be there and so the complete history okay till now you would have never studied this much detail about post office evolution anywhere okay no textbook is properly given so internet sources have taken and I have uh, compiled the data for you so please watch till the end okay always our editorials are going to be like life savers for you because your static and current both gets completed it's not simply reading out the uh, Hindu newspaper okay so first I'll show you the articles which we have for discussion today uh, the first article you can see it is this uh, Manipur debate okay the Manipur issue so that uh, we have been discussing or we have been seeing it multiple times it's not required and then here the renewable energy this is the last article we'll discuss this is uh, the next COP summit the UNFCC summit is going to happen in Dubai in November so that related uh, some announcements okay that we'll see and this is the most detailed article we'll do post office bill 2023 and then the science award okay so science award in India it is a very very important and prestigious award and UPSC 2009 prelims question has come based on this so that is why it becomes important so we have three articles for discussion this side it is this uh, corruption and the uh, politics you know in Andhra Pradesh I think uh, the Chandrababu Naidu ex-CM he was uh, 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 arrested or some questioning happening for uh, corruption okay some 350 crore uh, some scam so is it like political rivalry triggering, triggering all these uh, cases or actually they have done corruption that kind of interview based thing it's more of politics so you can read it for your sake but uh, exam point of view you will not get information okay and then here you can see the Libya flooding okay Libya is a country in Africa an African map we have already discussed in detail and in Morocco we saw I think earthquake so like this disasters are happening across the globe and here some picture is given that's all there is nothing to discuss okay so now going to the uh, very first article I will tell you a lot of static part first like uh, the post you know it is under the Ministry of Communication there is a department of post that is where the Indian post service will come okay so India it has a network of more than 1.59 lakh post offices so that is why it is considered one of the most important ones okay you may think this generation people may be not writing letters and not posting and all but still uh, it is necessary okay it is a very big system wherein which you can uh, disburse this uh, wages of Mandrega and many things because it is there in the last mile you will see any village also a very distant village one post office will be definitely there okay even from Ladakh you take till Lakshadweep you take anywhere there is a post office okay so that is the reason it can be used for uh, giving lot of government services okay and also for quick information something you just have to pass on to the post office department it will reach everywhere in the country okay so that is why it becomes very important so for, for more than 150 years this department of post is there but since many many centuries this uh, postal system is there in india so that full history and timeline i will teach you okay so here if you see um, it is a backbone of country's communication and then uh, delivering email uh, sorry mail accepting deposits under small saving scheme providing life insurance coverage under postal life insurance then rural post life insurance retail services like bill collection many many purposes there it's not just uh, sending letters or speed post okay then uh, as I told Mandrega uh, this thing is this thing or pension payment this and all can be dispersed through these accounts because people can quickly go and access it near their village itself okay and now technology and new services have come and modern post offices we have been doing lot of schemes that also I will tell you but again we need a new bill that is why this bill is being introduced okay now timeline from the Chandragupta Maurya time if you take ancient to modern uh, 321 BC 291 BC time and all we have this pigeon post which I already showed you the picture the pigeon post kind of system this is there in the postal department website website itself okay you can go and find this pdf there and then uh, the 1296 AD okay that is the time of Khilji's so Khilji's time the horse and the foot postal system were there okay where humans and horses uh, were for uh, communication meaning runners used to be there who has to run from one place to another and then give the, uh, the letter or the information okay that is the Khilji's time then after that you have the Ibn Battuta during the Tughlaq's time in 1341 he told L Volak horse carriers and L Dawa the foot runners okay two systems which UPSC can ask you then Babar in 1528 developed the runner services along the road from Agra up to the Kabul 
okay for exchanging again communication then horses were there every 36 miles so like that a relay system they will uh, keep uh, sharing uh, information then uh, uh, sher shah introduced okay sher shah humayun's time sher shah introduced uh, horse dark 2000 mile stretch you know he made this uh, grand trunk road from the punjab to the this area the full stretch of the northern plains so he had a grand trunk road so the grand trunk road is like uh, uh, bengal and sindh okay so he built this and then there sarais were there this mentioned in your ncrt sarais are like rest house where travelers can rest and all and so it every this many distance it will be there so you one person can take the message and go to the next point and like that then he can rest there so like that that system share Shah introduced okay this order of uh, kingdoms is very very important okay medieval like there is a trick also like sktsl okay sketsl which we tell the slave dynasty the khiljis the tughlaq the sayyid and the lodis after lodis only then the uh, mughal will come okay babar will defeat uh, uh, one person i think ibrahim lodi in 1526 the battle of panipat the first battle of panipat and that's how the mughal starts so this and all is basics you should know exactly which kingdom is what time okay not only this islamic kingdoms but the other south uh, that time the vijayanagara kingdoms were there in south also an islam kingdom bahamani kingdom is there okay then before that the kakatiya dynasty and deccan many kingdoms are there everything exact timeline and exact kings you have to know prelims questions are coming directly every year okay so now going forward again after Sher Shah 1672 we have this uh, uh, Mysore Anche or something which they started okay this Wadayar dynasty okay Tipu Sultan's time and all uh, Wadayar dynasty and then after that uh, East India Company came you know East India Company came in 1600s and they started the first post office in uh, 1727 and then Robert Clive started a regular postal system but all this you should know it was for their own purpose for their political things for their economic interest for them to share information for the public for the first time post was opened by Warren Hastings in 1774 okay after the regulating act of 1773 1774 this was done so the Calcutta general post office was established you know the main cities were Calcutta Bombay and Madras so first most of the things even bank I think first came in Calcutta the uh, Supreme Court came in Calcutta the capital was Calcutta everything first they will start Calcutta only okay then only then come to Bombay and uh, uh, Madras okay so 6, 1774 Calcutta post office came after that as I told uh, Madras thing came in 1786 and Bombay general post office came in 1794 after that 1837 the post office act reserved the government the exclusive right meaning to convey letters and everything uh, of the East India Company the government had the exclusive right those times you know eight, by 1858 and all East India Company will end and the crown will start taking the powers okay the government directly will start taking powers 1850s time you know Dalhousie came Dalhousie was studying lot of things in spectrum he started like railway line he started this woods dispatch thing was there a doctrine of labs many many things are there Dalhousie there is a question in mains Dalhousie is like the maker of modern India one question came in like UPSC mains okay so that you can go and see previous year question papers and all uh, it is a like, lot of things are there which he has done during his time like many bad things also many good things also which has modernized India okay including I think the telegraph and many things were there so now uh, he started post office as a separate organization for national importance and that time the uh, pricing of how you send this and all was based on like weight of the uh, letter you are sending and the distance also which has to travel he changed it to standard postal rate based on the weight alone meaning based on too much too much weight the charges will vary that system he introduced in 1850 then the some act 17 kind of thing was introduced in 1854 okay which again after a lot of studies and whatever needed to improve the system he has done outdated procedures were all done and this came into effect then 1852 the stamp the first adhesive stickable stamp came and this was the person who introduced okay no this is the person sir bartley okay this is the maybe the name of that this was introduced by sir bartley Frere. okay so east india's uh, some uh, uh, sindh province administrator he was he is the one who started the stamp concept but there is a plain stamp kind of thing then first uh, india wide postage stamp okay india wide national level postage stamp in 1854 it came okay again similarly like in british when they started stamps the postal service improved uh, nicely same that happened in india also in india also improvement was seen in the postal uh, system okay now if you uh, take this one where is okay one second yeah a uh, little bit modern okay after as i told the crown took over then government savings bank bank act 1873 came based on which later the savings bank account also starts in 1882 uh, and india joined the universal postal union that's actually an international body under the united nations it's a specialized agency okay un you should know un has 15 specialized agency like uh, fao 
or some, some things are there. Go and study that 15 specialized agency. This is one of that. So it's important. It's not like a side body or a very small body. It's a, one of the specialized agency of United Nations. Okay. So India joined that in 1876. Then postcards were introduced and railway mail service and money order was launched for the first time. Then here if you see insurance was launched in 1884. Then Indian Telegraph Act came in uh, 1885. Then this one, the Post Office Act 6. This only, even now we are following. Okay, the 1898 Act. That is what we are going to replace through the 2023 Act. Okay. Now, the f world's first official air mail flight, okay, through air uh, flight, that actually happened in India, okay. So, that is in 1911. 1931, the first pictorial stamps, picture-based stamps started coming, okay. And then later, they are dominion-based, like, uh, uh, they uh, uh, started issuing special stamps, okay. So, that one had Ashoka pillar on that, the new flag of India on that, an airplane photo on that, like that, designed pictures started coming, okay. Then, 1933, the Wireless Telegraphy Act came, okay. First was telegraphy, now wireless telegraphy. Telegraphy. Then the Indian postal order was introduced. Okay, same time there is some rules also. 1933 rules and all has come. And then uh, 1947, you know, independence we got. So independence special some postage stamps we uh, launched. Okay, that now also we do on any like hundredth anniversary of anything or we special special stamps and coins our government keeps launching. So this was the history till independence. Okay, it's not over. Again, more I'll teach you after this. That union thing, okay, Union Universal Postal Union, if you see, 1874, Treaty of Bern and uh, Specialized Agency of the UN. And it is, uh, if you see, founder name, not important. Okay, these are all not important. The parent organization is this UN uh, Economic and Social Council, okay, which is that ECOSOC, okay. ECOSOC one uh, body is there under the UN. That is the parent organization of this thing. So, this is the basics about Union Postal Service. Now, after independence, okay. Some important things are there, but the pin pin thing, right? PIN, which you put pin code is mandatory when you do a when you flip card order or anything. The pin is 99% enough to make you make that parcel reach till your like nearest place. Okay. So pin how it is looks like uh, the first digit indicates the zone, first two uh, digits indicate the subzone, then the uh, sorting district, then the service route, then here if you see the delivery post office, and all you don't have to buy heart, but at least some little bit awareness for your general thing. Okay. And then uh, pin is like as you know, six digit code it is and is made by this Sriram Bikhaji Velankar uh, when he was in service at Kolkata and it was introduced in 1972 by Indira Gandhi. Okay, that is the time when six digit uh, pin code started formally started being used. Okay, later after that in the 80s, the first speed post started. Okay, then in the 2000s, a Megdoot software was introduced for the post office usage. Then e-payment services started in 2006. Then there's a project Arrow which was launched in 2008 for modernizing the post office, meaning bringing everything digital, everything, okay, everything modernized. Then 2014 to 18, Modi government has been setting up multiple task forces, committees and two, three schemes also came, but nothing did not pick up. Okay, many uh, bank account related many things came. Okay. Meaning the savings account and that during that uh, uh, Jandan Yojana and all the post offices were lots, it was in news. Okay. Then after that, 2023, now they are going to introduce this bill. It's already introduced in Daja Sabha. Discussion will happen, it will get passed. So it will replace the Post Office Act 1898. This much history I am teaching you, which is not there in uh, Hindu, or it will not get in like one source, you will not get it. Okay. Now, if you uh, go to the Hindu newspaper of today. This bill, as I told, introduced in Rajya Sabha and uh, it will be discussed now. Now, uh, differences are a little bit comparison they are doing. While the 1898 Act had focused only on mail services, the new bill authorizes the Director General of Postal Services to make regulations related to activities necessary for providing various other services. Okay and fixed charge also meaning earlier you had to uh, take approval if you see parliament approval for anything and everything which the post office had to design okay meaning you know this competitive world this uh, courier service and uh, many other services are there parcel service are there so the india post is not getting uh, such uh, uh, market share okay so because they had to if anything they have to introduce they have to get the parliamentary approval and the permission of central government so now they have removed it they have given the full power to Director General of Postal Service. He can introduce schemes. He can uh, reduce or increase the price based on the need or the demand. He can do that. Okay. So, that's a very good positive thing which has happened in the new bill. Okay. Once it gets passed. Then, uh, if you see here, another one negative thing which happened is earlier this uh, postal department could uh, check any parcel or any anything which you are sending if you find it suspicious, if any maybe any uh, smuggling is happening through the postal department, any anything is happening, you have full complete authority to check for any reason, meaning randomly you can check any parcel. But now it is limited to certain factors alone, meaning you can do the checking, but only for uh, if you see interest of the security of the state, friendly relation with foreign neighbors, public order, emergency, public safety. So this much. Any 
anyway you can consider all the causes under this in some angle but still earlier this limited numbers or uh, topics are not given it's like they can check anytime anything which they feel suspicious okay but that changed to this fixed names so that made it little narrow that is what the author is telling one positive thing we told one negative thing we told and another thing such rules are not going to apply for courier firms the private courier firms and also why only for india post you have put this kind of five six names and told only under this you should do the checking that is a wrong thing according to uh, author okay so indian post has a share of less than only 15 percentage of the market okay because we have the other express service the parcel service and everything and all so these kind of restrictions if you put it will put limitations on this public service so you should not ideally do it according to author now in the domestic courier industry you know there are many medium and small players okay there are many people who are now you will see flipkart when you deliver they are giving it to some courier parcel service and they are giving it maybe flipkart maybe themselves won't do it okay so uh, the bill if you see the new bill uh, there is this addressing another new thing good thing which has happened is physical address we write right the name like if you want to send to me like the post vice is then this address this pin code this thing like that you will write full physical address instead if you know my correct gps coordinates okay which you do simply selecting the map on the point like this much latitude this much longitude you know the correct pinpoint you can do that is where the latitude and longitude is there so digital address can be used instead of the physical address okay so that is a, a very good modern thing okay because many countries have already started experimenting this and even delivering by drone okay Okay, meaning humans don't have to come the drone will be like set like the pin if you set i mean the location if you correctly set it drone will correctly go and deliver it and come okay many countries are even doing food delivery through drones now so that is a very good thing that uh, replace uh, physical address with the uh, digital code which has the geospatial coordinates that is again one good clause which is there okay but again author is telling there is a long way to go to get all these things uh, implemented okay and again uh, another thing something is dropped from the uh, this thing from the older act in this new bill something is dropped that is the central government shall have the exclusive privilege of conveying the post from one place to another meaning again same thing central government used to have the complete exclusive power of complete thing that line which was written in the old act colonial act that is now removed okay and also definition definition is always a debatable thing in every bill so definition of letter and document meaning what is a letter what is a document it is never defined in the old act but in the new act it will be defined okay you Usually by law, people consider that uh, the courier, okay, the courier services, whenever they do something, it is called document. When it is uh, the uh, other thing, it is letter, okay. See, courier delivered where documents and parcels and not the letters. Now, the new bill, become if it becomes an act, the legal debates of what constitute a letter and what did not will die automatically, okay. A common commoner, meaning uh, people like you and me, perceives a letter to be handwritten or something written and it's a personal form of communication between two individuals and physically conveyed by post. For us, that is called letter. Remaining anything is a parcel or any, any other thing, okay. So, that distinction, I think in the new bill, they will give proper definitions, okay. And now this mobile revolution came and you know everything is written, thing is reduced, but still, uh, the central government's privileges when you remove that is actually a good thing okay so they are acknowledging the reality and the step in the right direction so as i told the hindu has only these many two three clauses but i taught you the complete evolution of postal which has a chance of being asked in upsc and in between that lot of prelims fact also who was the uh, governor general and who was the people who introduced certain things the dynasties everything i taught you okay this much is maximum needed for a postal bill now when it gets passed if any new important point is there i will cover it for you okay now we'll go to the next article before that if you want to study seriously okay vaishya's daily videos vaishya's test series will be sufficient for you okay but if you study it simply purchasing my test series and keeping you will not pass simply watching random random episodes you will not pass you have to study every day and one year you do it that immediate next year you should ideally pass the prelims okay people simply take your studies casually many people like they make it like a five year plan okay i will start now and by 2026 i'll pass by 2027 i'll pass that's actually a very foolish decision okay this is just a job it is just an exam for that you don't have to waste your five years that five years you could have uh, got into some other job and earned more money okay you have to earn money also it's social service that and all is there but being like a fool and preparing for an exam for seven eight years without having a backup plan or without doing anything that is very wrong okay one year two year you can give after that and all you should parallelly do something also you do some job also and parallelly uh, do the preparation also if you want okay so start thinking of all that and if you need the current affair packs and offers and all please whatsapp me and start studying the right way okay now the second article the science price okay the science price uh, it is called the shanti swaru bhatnagar price to in india okay so 2022 price has it was a delay last year they did not announce and this year now they announced so that is why it came in news now okay and uh, around 12 people got it 12 scientists got it and all are male okay no females are there that's also one reason it is being discussed okay 
So why it's important? Okay, why it's important? Because if you see 2009 question for outstanding contribution to which one of the following field is Shanti Swaru Bhatnagar prize given? Okay, and the answer is C, science. So this way awards and sports have, you know, again come back. Okay, UPSC started asking all the sports awards, all the chess tournaments, uh, football tournaments, cricket. They started asking all the silly things. Only one question will come in the full 100 questions. But still, you have to study it if it is in news. Okay, uh, so now basics before going to again, before going to Hindu, the static class study, okay, which is not there in the Hindu. So it's the highest multidisciplinary science award in India, considered like India's Nobel Prize kind of thing, even though the prize money is not as much as how much you get in Nobel Prize. So here it is named after Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar, who is the founder and director of the CSIR uh, body. Okay, about CSIR also I'll teach you today. Then five lakh cash prize is there award annually and given for all these things biological science chemical science earth atmosphere planetary science engineering science mathematical science medical science physical science all these things are there okay mathematics today's today mains exam happened okay i will make another video for that mains essay exam happened one essay topic was some mathematics is the music of some something like that okay something the word mathematics also in the philosophy section you know eight essays will be there in mains paper okay section a four essays section b four essays and you have to write one essay from section a one next year from section b and it was like little bit uh, philosophical and all justice mathematics music that kind of one topic was there so when we do that video you will see it okay so now any citizen of india can get this but age will be up to 45 years in any of those field okay and the work considers actually only five years meaning last five years before the announcement date of the prize anything you did if it's seven years ten years back you did something you missed the chance and you will not get the award so Again, if you see the OCI and the PIO, that the overseas, uh, overseas citizen of India and the person of Indian origin, we have such uh, people category of Indians also. And if they are working in India, then they are eligible. Okay, so these are the uh, basics about Shanti Swarup uh, Prize and you don't have to study anything more than this. Now, because we mentioned CSIR, okay, CSIR is again important because many UPC questions have come. Primary reason being the Prime Minister of India is the president of this body. Okay ex officio president kind of thing he is the president of uh, uh, the csir okay and the ministry of science and technology is the vice president so many people will think maybe it is the ministry of science and technology which is the president that is why i taught you this and then there is a director general who is heading all the governing body and it is done along with the finance secretary of expenditure okay because the funding is also done by the ministry of science and technology okay and this act as an autonomous body because it is registered as the under the society act of 1860 okay it is registered as a society not as a company then it has a network of 37 laboratory, 39 centers, okay, Pan-India presence it has, headquarters in Delhi and it is established in the British Times, 1942. This also is a way of UPSC asking, like it, in the uh, British India, CSIR was established. So you will think, no, maybe it is modern thing, maybe in the 80s or 90s it was done, but it's not like that. In the 1942 itself, its original form was there, okay. So this is the static about the price and the CSIR. Now, going to the uh, Hindu editorial okay so inaugural session of this one week one lag one lab program was there which is a program under csir only csir's uh, this national institute of science and this thing is there there a session was there there they announced the uh, awards okay there was a delay this time because last year i think september itself the uh, people's name was published or something but the awards are not given so that is the reason there's a delay and delay also why it is i will tell you soon but uh, now it is given 2022 no female candidates are there and this thing as i told owl it is a theme based campaign with in the CSIR where they promote this young innovators and students and opportunities for deep tech. You can tell your ideas and these things and also it's a kind of event which happens under the CSIR. Okay, so now it's unusual that last year CSIR did not announce the award despite the winners already picked as I told in September 26. Okay, and usually uh, that's the Institute's Foundation Day, September 26. And that is the traditional date in which they usually give the awards and announce the winners. But even after picking, they did not announce it. There was a delay. Okay, delay was because they had planned to make a bigger award because now this government is promoting too much in science and you will see the ISRO and uh, Chandrayaan and everything. We are giving funds also, even though not too much, but we are giving funds compared to previous years and we are supporting okay support is the biggest thing these people need because these people usually their careers are like less rewarding the scientists and all because even if you go for teaching job the same science uh, people they will get maybe more money okay but as a scientist or a researcher you don't get much money or much uh, stipend much fellowship programs you did not have now it's coming so this government thought we should give a big prize for scientists okay big big scientists who do new research, research and innovation we should give Nobel prize equivalent big prize so that plan was going on but ultimately it took one and half year now they couldn't come out with anything okay nothing is announced so far so um, uh, ministry of home affairs they decided let's give the shanti Swarup prize itself and that is what has happened now okay 
so delay was for uh, that reason okay and also there are many other ministries who are giving many small 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 awards and all that is why the government was confused what to do cancel all these awards and make a big award or continue this only so that confusion delayed it but finally now the award has been uh, given okay so 12 male uh, winners all are from iit okay most of them are from iit okay centrally funded institutes okay 11 11 of them are from there and then uh, as i told expanding the awards it can happen government is now tirelessly the diversity expanding opportunities for scientists and all chandrayaan 3 support is a demonstration because 2019 it failed the government did not stop funding or did not shout at the isr and all they supported them they again gave fund and then the prime minister themselves himself is going and sitting there and monitoring it and then appreciating it also because that is the biggest thing they need the appreciation and when the prime minister of the country itself tells them they get motivated and the next mission again also will be successful okay because they know that whatever happens the government is standing with us okay they will not shut down the these things and all because those happen in 50s and 60s when something they do and it fail immediately government will then shut down that shut down the baba atomic research center shut down the nuclear program like that it used to happen but now we are giving more and more fund and more and more support so that's a good thing and hopefully it will continue for the coming years also okay so two articles are over now the third article which is the unfcc cop so many people i know don't even know the full form okay it's the united nations framework for convention on this climate change okay so the climate change conference United Nations Climate Change Conference or Convention that is actually it happens every year every year in November December time it happens and it happens in a different venue okay I think India is still now not hosted but India will surely host it because the power India has now including G20 we have hosted we may host this also because we are the ones who are actually doing more climate programs compared to other countries okay so this time it will happen in Dubai which is in UAE okay United Arab Emirates so November 32 December 12 it will happen okay and the last time it was in some african country i will show you everything so basics of unfcc this first paragraph wikipedia if you read itself you will get it okay so here if you see usually they call okay whenever this unfcc meet they will call it as cop okay meaning conference of parties okay so cop 1 cop 2 cop 3 it will go like that around the cop uh, some 15 or something okay uh, when the kyoto protocol came right kyoto protocol came that also you have to discuss now okay kyoto base so that they named something like uh, cma or something okay i'll just show you one second cmp okay so it'll be like maybe that is cop 15 but that year it is cmp 1 okay the next year onwards it'll be cop 16 but cmp 2 okay so like that they started an two names for the same conference after that in uh, 2021 you know the paris climate came so they gave one more name Okay, so every conference has two, three names, even though universally we call it COP conference, COP 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, you will understand when I explain more. Okay, like example, first COP happened in Berlin. So if you see, it's all COP 1, COP 2, COP 3, like that, that is the name. Now, 2005, when the Kyoto Protocol started, from there onwards, it is like COP 11 it reached, but new one more name is there, CMP 1. Okay, like that it will go COP 12, CMP 2, COP 13, CMP 3, like that it will go. Now after that, see, it's going like this with two, two names. When it reached the 2015-16 time, you know the Paris Climate Agreement we did. Okay, then they gave one more name, CMA. So it became CMA1. Okay, from that day on, we have to discuss the Paris related thing also. So it's a COP22, it's a CMP12, it's a CMA1. Next one will be COP23, CMA13 and CMA12. The discussion of it is continued. Okay, so like that. CMA is for Paris climate, CMP is for Kyoto Protocol and COP is the general name. These things are all I am sure nobody teaches you. Okay, so this is how the naming convention will be. So the latest one which is happening in Dubai is COP28, CMP18, meaning 18 the time Kyoto Protocol discussion or after Kyoto Protocol came and CMA5. Okay, so this is the naming convention and every time there is a group, okay, this Western economic group is there, this African group is there, Eastern European group is there. So there are certain groups in which there are few countries and from there only the host is ch uh, chosen. This time it is from Asia. Asia group and from Asia they have chosen Dubai. So next whenever the Asia group comes okay because it takes some time if you see here one Asia group is there after that he, after these many years only Asia group again came whenever the next Asia group comes maybe India will be also chosen as the venue okay so that is how it is okay last time Asia group was Doha okay here it there is Qatar and here it is uh, this one in between it's all if you see African and this thing that how they decide I am not clearly sure but they have certain groups in which they decide the host okay so this is the latest summit so now what happened they even before that they will start having meetings even before the uh, summit happens they'll have meetings in the meeting dubai kept forward uh, this thing like let's triple triple the renewable energy capacity meaning how much we have let's triple it by 2030 okay which is a very very highly ambitious thing because it's already 2023 and okay now we are telling in six years six and a half years triple meaning you have 3000 gigawatt or something of renewable energy make it 9000 
So it's a like humanly impossible thing unless crores of rupee funding and things come. Okay, because solar energy, wind energy, hydro energy, you have to set up the plants also. It's not like you simply press one button and it will happen. So it's a very ambitious thing. Even the G20 declaration discussion, this was mentioned. Okay, but now Dubai is suggesting it. And that means they will keep that proposal in the summit in uh, UNFCC COP28. And every country, if they agree, then everybody will have to do it. Okay. So now, uh, if you see, as uh, so they are telling the numbers, see, 3000 gigawatt is there as of now. So you are telling it, make it 9000 gigawatt, okay, by six years, which is very, very difficult. But if it happens, it's a win-win appeal. But again, the author is telling, when you start decoding it, deconstructing this and take our count of existing thing, it is like going to uh, dampen the enthusiasm. It is going to make your enthusiasm go down because it's not possible, okay. So these numbers and all, if you want, you can note down like half of the world, uh, this thing, renewable is now in hydropower, then solar is 13%. Wind is 23 percent. Okay, that is how the current share of renewable energy is there when you take. Okay, then uh, tripling this implies a target of 9000 gigawatt. That means you have to do more than 6000 gigawatt now in six years. And the capacity is to ex is expected to come from where? It is expected to come from solar and wind. Why solar and wind? Because to set up a hydropower system the six years won't be enough. The construction time itself will exceed 2030. So you have to focus on solar and wind if you have to make this goal possible. Okay, solar plants and wind uh, capacity you have to do. And also, you know, many maintenance work will be required. It's actually not possible, but this is what Dubai's suggestion is. Okay, now assuming capacity of this much, this much. This again, numbers, if you want, you can read because I don't think this much detailing you can remember. This is 28%, this is 30%, this is 20 That much you cannot do. Okay, then there is no such thing as global electricity demand also because every country's uh, need is different. Okay, like India is now in the developing phase and we want to like too much energy we are using. So our need will be huge. But other people's you this may be lesser okay we may still need to use some fossil fuel but others can start uh, dissolving it so there are many many you cannot put a one uh, rule for everyone and tell okay start doing it so that concerns and all when the actual cop happens we'll see what how the discussion goes as I told in developing countries, especially India and China, between 2010 to 19, the consumption has grew by 6.6% and 6.3 percentage. This you can note down. This is India's and China's data. You can note down. But in European Union, only 0.3% that to decline has happened in electricity consumption. And in USA, a little bit of 0.12 plus 0.12 growth has happened. So compared to that, obviously, we are consuming the electricity more. Okay. So again, uh, facing out this when we talk this tripling also, are we simply telling about tripling this or are we telling about facing down the fossil fuel also or keep the fossil fuel just like that and then do the tripling. Both has different meanings, right? Okay, because 100% share, you have 50% fossil fuel now, remaining 50% renewable energy and are you going to simply triple this by keeping this just like that or you will reduce this and parallel increase this. So your 100% share will change. So that thing is no clarity is not there. That again in numbers 37, 47. So this I don't want you to study also, but little bit important things I have just highlighted. Okay, if you do that fossil fuel reducing way, it will be a different target. If you do a fossil fuel and uh, keeping like that and increasing the renewable, it will be a different target. So that I've just put India has a huge tripling target. If that case like 12% you have to do and the USA has only 0.4% in that case. So it is better you all reduce the fossil fuel also. That is the suggestion they are giving phase out of fossil fuel EU and USA should do only then their share also will increase so that mathematics actually you should not do little bit meaning you should understand okay so allow the developing countries to uh, do better by uh, the north global north I used to tell the developed countries okay Australia is also considered part of the global north who are all the developed countries so they uh, uh, should reduce their uh, fossil fuel capacity considerably and parallelly do the uh, this thing also renewable energy uh, share you should increase also okay so now Again, COP28, it should have a uh, meaning the transparency should be there because uh, the now what is told is like lack of transparency. There is no meaning unless we see the detailed clauses and all. Okay. Uh, they are the author is finally telling this also India should not just blindly sign it because of huge ambition and all because we already have put high target of 500 gigawatt uh, ambitious target. Okay. Which is... Uh, to be achieved by 2030 and that itself is very difficult task on top of that tripling and all becomes even more difficult. So now here if you see. Uh, the targets again for sub-Saharan -Sub Africa, it is 80% something you have to do renewable energy, but for EU they have put only 70%, meaning whatever Dubai has published now, some clauses, it looks like Africa had to do more than Europe, which is again a very difficult and very uh, not equal kind of thing. And that is what in the last slide also I think he is discussing. 
it is not equitable okay the the rich country have lesser work and the poor country have more work that is never acceptable okay so we should not do like that because india is at least the only one who is having lot of schemes and lot of uh, things about uh, renewable energy and uh, climate change related things uh, but the president joe biden if you take or eu if you take they don't have any proper guaranteed by government kind of targets or schemes okay they don't tell by this year we'll do this they're just generally telling okay we should do that okay see general announcements they are doing like okay we will follow the Paris climate we will try to decarbonize by 2035 we will have 40 percent by this thing these are all goals which they simply tell here and there it's not published anywhere as a document but india has proper published thing which we call the nationally determined contribution ndc which after the paris agreement only it came every country has to give the ndc like how much we will uh, try to achieve nationally so that we have given every year but these people just tell announcements here and there there is no written documented legal proof okay that is why india should not simply uh, listen to them we should be more vocal about our targets and our things and all and uh, the challenges also you should discuss because the main challenge is the funding 100 billion dollar funding the developed country was supposed to give to developing country as per paris agreement till now nobody has given when trump came also he told we are not ready to simply give that much money to everyone so like that first follow what is already there then talk about big big tripling target and all that is what the author is suggesting okay so hope you got the information about all the three in very detailed fashion I try to do the static as well as the current affair so that UNFCC and all please go and read this okay because here certain things are there it's like you see Durban platform okay Durban platform is like uh, again uh, Paris agreement related discussions which they happened it's called the Durban platform okay one just one fact I found interesting for uh, this thing okay see Kyoto protocol came 2005 onwards we have the CMP okay then after that CMA so these are all the very very basics which usually nobody teaches you okay so try to revise again and again every day if you do YCIS you should ideally pass it's up to you how much seriously you take our videos and all because we are doing that many videos every single day and uh, i hope you will uh, continue to do this okay so next we'll do this episode where today's engineers day based on that i'll tell the importance of today in the next episode okay so thank you and have a nice day